K-Wave 6 Radio and our host, Kirk Spencer, welcome you to our show, bringing positive messages to today's world. And now, here's Kirk. Hello and welcome to K-Wave 6 Radio. I am your host, Kirk Spencer. Today, I am happy to bring back a gentleman, a guest, who turned out to be almost like a brother from another mother. Very nice guy, very informative. Uh, just without further ado, let's welcome back Doug Harold from TimeInEternity.net. Welcome back, Doug. Hey, Kurt. It's really great to be back with you, and, and I look forward to today's show and, and really had a great time the last time and, and enjoyed the last month or so getting to know you and following your show, so glad to be back. Well, thank you. It's back, and... I put your bumper on the uh, quite a few of the shows there, so I always get to hear your voice, so that's a good thing, too. Um, Doug is back today because he wants to talk about something that he and his group, Time and Eternity, does. And uh, through their course of knowing each other, getting to know each other, whatnot, he has a lot of information that he wants to share. So we're going to let him talk today about personal development. I think he has a lot to share with those who are willing to listen. So, wait a minute. You also have a uh, book, as you said, it was your latest book, and it starts out in hope, and you can take it from there. Yeah, I have a book, In Hope for Time and Eternity, My Life Through My... Well, it's not sort of, it's my personal story that uh, that I've sort of worked through inside of personal development and looking back... uh, being born and raised in, on a farm in small town, Kentucky, and my dad leaving uh, early in life, you know, at six months old, and all the things that I've had to, to work through that nobody told me about, and, and then, you know, sort of had an aha moment several years back to where I realized an investment inside of me is really a great investment. So it's called In Hope for Time and Eternity, My Life Through My Eyes. So it's just a, a brief synopsis of lots of emotional stuff that I have sort of worked through. Yeah, well, those are the best kind because you can actually relate to them. It's not something you read, it's something you live through. So, start anywhere you want. Uh, no, I think we'll start, uh, you know, just in, you know, in personal development, you know, like I said, uh, you know, certainly even around here in, in Midwestern America, the, the stigma around emotional development or personal development, uh, folks think maybe it's selfish or what I found heard is it literally it was for me and for my wife and three daughters it was life changing. Uh, I was 40 years old, very successful uh, as far as the world stage goes, but on the inside, honestly, I you know I'm thinking if this is all there is, there's really not a lot here, you know. So I began to look emotionally at myself and begin to invest in myself. You know, I think sometimes we have a a mindset that life ends at formal education, and and the reality is you know life learning never ends and and that's the that's sort of the the model that we've discovered at time and eternity and you know uh, sort of around five areas of 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 life Uh, you know we start with spiritual health relationship health uh, emotional health physical health and financial health so those sort of five uh those sort of five pillars that you know that obviously all of us you know either have to continue to grow or learn from so that's that's been sort of the model and you know, I personally start with, um, you know, with spiritual health uh, because I, I do think we're spiritual beings. I think it's important uh, uh, that we, you know, that we understand that. You know, my, my personal belief is, you know, not really religious. Um, and I say that, you know, after passing a church for 20 years, a little bit weird, but um, but 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 it's a really ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, it's a relationship. You know, religion tells you what we have to do. God says, here it is. It's done. Uh, and so that's what I mean. I, I don't like the bondage of religion. I like the fact that in your average church, you can't raise your hand and say, hey, you pray for me, I'm struggling. Uh, we've turned our, I think, a lot of times we've turned our churches into a place to where you have to be perfect. And, you know, reality is we're we're not perfect. We're all striving to be better, but we're nowhere near perfect. And so that's why I like to, to start. And then, and you know, and I at least like to start there with, you know, my personal, and some people never had thought about, you know, their, their spiritual uh, life. Um, but what we do in personal coaching, say, well, how do you, 
build a personal plan. Well, you build a personal plan, I think, the same way you build an organizational plan. Uh, so for me, at 40, I decided, where do I want to be in 10 years? Um, I, you know, it seemed like if I could fix me, by the time I'm 50, maybe I could really help some folks. Uh, and I did. I just turned 48, and my book's been out for about six months. Um, about 18 months ago, I realized that I had a lot of the the answers, the questions folks were struggling with. So I began to, you know, I began to try to teach and try to help other folks with, you know, with with their personal uh, investment. And you know, Kurt, you and I have talked lots off the air. You know, it really is about the joy of life, and it really is about how we see ourselves. It's about the internal. Uh, how we see ourselves, and, and I believe that we invest in ourselves is not, I'm trying to stop so you can say something, but I got so much important stuff to say. I told you I get excited. <laughs> yeah, well, go for it. <laughs> but, 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 you know, it's, a, it, it, it's about investing in ourselves is not selfish. I believe it's selfish not to invest in ourselves because I believe we cheat the rest of the world out of the talents and gifts that we have. Exactly. So, so, you know, so I liken it. And I'm going to stop after this, but I liken it to the apple tree. Our life's the apple tree. And once we invest inside of our life, then the folks get to enjoy the fruit, the fragrance, and the flower of the apple tree that we put off. And if we never invest, eventually all we're doing is taken and we're never given. Investing in oneself is definitely, so I've said this so many times, is even becoming old for me. But it's like I did with a student of mine some time ago. I was talking to her one day, and she's always talking about uh, always being there for somebody else. And I said, invest. I may, may not have used the word invest. But I said, here, let me give you an example. And since I'm down here in Mexico, I use the pesos thing. I said, I need to borrow 500 pesos from you, and I'll pay you back next week. Uh, and even with interest, if you want. And she goes, well, I don't have 500 pesos. I said, exactly. That's the point. If you don't invest in, can you give? How can you loan? How can you do anything for anybody else until you invest in yourself? Um, no, and that's the you know, that's the point of the apple tree. You know, if we don't have any give, uh, and 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 again, so if we don't have anything to give, we can't give. So that's why I personally believe that that investment never stops. I believe. A life that's really lived, lived with passion and joy is a life that's lived with continuous improvement. I'm the idiot that wakes up every day hungry and goes to bed every night full, you know. Uh -huh. uh, you know, all of the, 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 the shows that I've had the opportunity to do to help promote my book, you know, everybody always says, well, how do you define success? And, you know, I struggle with that for a while. It's like, oh, you know, I don't know. But, but honestly, I've come to the place where, you know, I literally, I wake up hungry Meaning I'm looking forward to the day and I go to bed like, man, it's a really day. Yeah. Uh, that, that is success, you know, because there's lots of folks that that may not have monetary health or physical health or physical looks, but yet they have some, con so, you know, for me, it's, it's that continuous education or that continuous improvement personal lifestyle model that helps us keep growing. So we can be more satisfied, and then also we can give more, and that's a really that's a really fun place to be. Most definitely, it's when you know that you have, and that's the biggest thing. If you want to look at it, just the way you said it, if you know that you have, you don't have to worry about where am I going to get and how am I going to get. It's I have. Let me give. Yeah, most definitely. So. What's another thing that you consider, uh, well, that you look at in personal development? Uh, you know, the next one sort of on the wheel is re relationship health. And, and, you know, and you know, you're about as old as I am, um, and I'm probably being kind, but, you know, we're about the same age. You know, yeah. live up life, screw lots of things up. Yeah, uh, and I you know, <laughs> and, and unfortunately for me and even for my wife, and we've been married for, 26 and a half years but nobody ever really taught us we've had to learn by hard knocks and some of those knocks were really hard and and because she's really stubborn and because i'm really blessed to have a great wife i mean we're still together but to be able to teach folks about relationship health I mean, you know we got three daughters uh now one just graduated college two's in college but they were within all within three of each other but we were lucky enough sometimes to get it right like when i had a product launch or something at work that we would be able to tell my kids, hey, for the next 30 days, dad's going to be spending a lot of time, you know, but just to be able to have those conversations so we can work on our relationships. 
uh, even you know as a as a parent as a husband as a wife uh, you know we all struggle with those things we all struggle when when we have kids and 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 their demons crash with our demons and the next thing you know we have a blow up as yeah. my have, have raised uh and older i've realized that i can't let my anger crash with their failure you know so you know so very simple thing in, in, in relationship is I can look at one of my daughters uh, when, when, and so they don't do very much very often but I can say that I'm disappointed instead of that I'm mad and that makes all the difference because you know I'm mad okay I'm mad too. but that hey I'm disappointed you fail but failure is not final so let's go forward but just to be able to mature enough to know that what our family does, what our kids do, is not necessarily a reflection on us. Our job as parents is to be able to have a conversation and talk to them. You know, in the same way with a, with a, you know, lot of, but he, and you know, Kurt, you've been around a long time. We have people that it's really hard to be a friend because it's exhausting because they demand so much inside a relationship. But to be able to, I literally was talking to somebody before I talked to you tonight. And I said, you owe it to yourself to build boundaries for other people. Suck you dry in order to validate who them are. To who the, that's not, not even good Kentucky English, Kurt, I'm sorry. But yeah. to validate who, who they are. So even inside of the relationship boundaries, for us to build relationship boundaries and say, hey, you know, you can't manipulate me. You know, you but sometimes it just gets exhausting to be your friend because you're constantly wanting me to validate who you are. And I know that you understand what I'm talking about, but that's what I mean when we talk about relationship health. Indeed. Matter of fact, a friend of mine and I, a friend of mine actually over in England, northern, or I think it's northeastern England, uh, he and I had a friend who... We just kind of called him the Askhole, A S K H O L E, <laughs> because he just kept asking and asking and asking. He was usually the same question or the same sets of questions, and we'd give him answers, and then he would, okay, I understand, I'm good with that. And a day or later, he's back asking the same thing, maybe in different words, and we keep giving him the same information, and then they just went, we can't do our own work because he wants so much of our time. So we ended up having to just say, I'm sorry, but bye-bye. I have things I have to do. And, you know, and, and you and I have got to that place, but you know how hard it took us to get to that place? Oh, how, yeah. how You know, just to be able to tell somebody, listen, I love you, but you're doing the same thing you always done, and you're going to get the same thing you always got, and need a change, uh, or till you're ready to get help. But it's hard for people to look inside of themselves and say, listen, I deserve better than that. I deserve more than you to suck two or three hours every day. And I'm, and I'm all for helping people. Yeah. And, and I can give you hundreds of references to that. But you can't help somebody that doesn't want help and that's not willing to do something to get help. There's no magic pill. There's no magic button. And they want advice, but yet they're not going to take your advice that's fine there's 500 more people that can go help and make a difference in their life that's why you all the time so to be able to build those boundaries and sometimes Kurt, even the boundaries is in our family i mean you know i say a lot of times and in, in, in kentucky's a great place to be from but i like i could leave for 20 years and i could come back and within five minutes i could be back in the same conversation that i left yeah. uh, and and that's okay that people want that yeah. i don't want that so don't be like a bunch of crabs. And when I try to get out of the crab, pull me back down. And and but to be able to tell folks that it's okay that you do that, but I don't want that. And then to be able to have enough strength to build those boundaries around the kind of relationships that we want, and then move forward. Because if we get rid of bad relationships, we have then opportunities for good relationships. Yeah. And as you say, you both of us like to reach out and help people. We also like to take care of ourselves as well. So. Yes, we make ourselves better and we can touch more people's lives for the good uh, when we do step away from those who are, as you said, pulling us back into the crab pot. So, uh, before we move into another subject, let's take our first break. 
And we hope too. We'll be right back with my guest, Doug Harold. Hi, this is Dr. Nick Leroy, and you're listening to K-Wave 6 Radio with its host, Kirk Spencer. I'm a holistic physician. I specialize in women's health, breast thermography, the alternative treatment of cervical dysplasia, and gastrointestinal disorders. And you can find me at drnick.net. Hi, this is Pat Kammer, author of Lost Voice Changes You, book one. And I now have book two, which is called Hello Awesome, Message from Spirit in Pat's Patters. Buy your book from Amazon.com. Hi, this is Kate McKay, the mass motivator at kate-mckay.com. You're tuned in to the amazing K-Wave 6 Radio. Hello and welcome back. My guest today is Doug Harrell. Uh, he is from timeandeternity.net, as you already know. And just before the break, we were talking about uh, relationship health and relationship issues. And um, we were talking a little bit um, while on break, so Doug is going to start there and with other ideas that kind of flow into that. So, Doug, yeah, Mike. Okay. Um, you know, we're talking about relationship health, and that leads us to the next uh, the next circle in our what we call the wholeness of life, which is, you know, emotional health. Uh, and I think that's important because, you know, I don't, and I struggled even work with trying to put these in order as I began to think about, okay, what does the circle look like? Emotional health in the top three, and I could make an argument to be number or one of the clergy, you know, on the on the relationship health, uh, a big piece of the relationship health, the, the spiritual uh, health. But, you know, even for me, as I'm in small town Kentucky, to be 40 years old and by every right and uh, the American standard being very, very successful and realizing that yeah, there's something missing. And, you know, and what I learned as I began to work literally through psychological health. Um, you know, I was, you know, I had Christ, uh, found Christ at the age of 20, you know, and I, and I got the very pure in that, but still uh, uh, inside of my go to look at all of those things. And, and honestly, you know, my dad left young, city old, you know, and never was around. And, and I lived for eight years, you know, really angry because my dad wasn't around instead of recognizing the other blessing of being raised by my grandparents while my mom went to work. And them loved me and my grandparents, my mother and sister and my mom and I, they essentially started over, you know, and then looking back, they never treated us any different than their own children. And, you know, blessing by that, teaching me to work and teach me to have care. But I, but I never, I never got, I began to do some emotional healing. And, and literally I looked, looked at everything as a curse. Instead, I looked at the curse side of everything instead of the blessing side of everything. Uh, and, and I do think there's a curse side and a blessing side of everything as well. And you know that. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes our word, or even those curses and blessings, I decided, you know, I just turned 48, and so I did you know, three or four years ago that, you know, I was able to start looking at life inside of the blessings instead of inside of the blessings. And for me, on the emotional side, I wanted so bad to feel like I mattered to somebody. I was constantly manipulating in a grand scale, not, not consciously, but subconsciously. I was constantly manipulating, always fishing for a compliment, always fishing for validation of who I was. But no matter in reality, no matter what I did or what somebody did them anyway, because of the of self doubt that I had and the self I had told myself. So that's when we talk about emotional work. You know, that, that's where we start at. I think is things that we that we tell ourselves. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And okay. you know, you, you you think about it. Um, all got a all got a gain since the last time that I had the pleasure of being on your show. I buried my forty four year old brother. Uh, and five weeks later, two weeks ago, I had my dad. Uh, and, you know, I had gotten past the, the thing with my dad. And, and, you know, I love my dad for the sake of my dad. You know, my little sister, she struggled with it. Didn't, what, I, what I've learned and, and what I tell folks is we pain to life, you know. Unless I'm the next, I'm not going to get through it. You know, if I'm going to go, I don't care. The rest of you all can have it, you know. But the difference pain and suffering is suffering is no hope of ever getting out of pain. You know, I mean, I certainly had to go through my, you know, my brother passing away and even my dad passing away and, you know, the emotional struggles inside that, you know, I'm here at my home getting ready to go to the 
postal service and today would have been a funk since my dad had and I started to take a shower and I realized I didn't even know how I was supposed to feel. I didn't know how anybody expected to feel because obviously the drama of, you know, my mom, I see a lot of bad memories for her, my little sister, you know, Doug, he's never been our dad. I'm sorry, but I'm not coming. And then, you know, and I, then also the reality, the finality always of, of having a, a father son relationship. Uh, I sort of broke, I didn't break down. I broke down and I cried like a little baby. But I, but I realized those dreams of having a father-son relationship that I've had for 48 years, those were impossible. Uh, but I, I think that's normal. I think it was okay for me to walk through it and talk to it. Uh, but, but with that seven and a half years of real deep you know, work, work I, I don't know where I would have been. I don't know what I got through. Uh, and I don't mean that you know flippantly, but there was so many emotions uh, that had pinned up eight years. And, and then honestly, that. Dream that I've had all my life of, of really having a dad and a father and relationship. You know, for me it was on, and my heart was. Uh, but I didn't even know that I had the right to have my heart broken, you know, because of all the other stuff that everybody else feeling. But you know, I mean, at the end of the day, the only thing that I've ever wanted now, yes, I knew, but now, but now I recognize there's no way it'll happen. It's just the normal father son relationship. I mean, I look at my wife, and and she's got a, <coughs> a very good family. A tremendous relationship with her dad. I've always looked at and admired it. Sometimes been jealous over it. Sometimes been angry because. But and then, but we all have to deal with with pain. And what I give folks, and even in the title of my book, and hope for time. In my eyes, I want to give folks hope. I give folks hope. Some of the pain they're going through is normal. Uh, it doesn't we allow it choices, uh, but there is things that are real. And it's it's hard. And I'm a great big old six four, three hundred five pound guy. And in my book, you know, I stripped down completely, emotionally naked, the whole to see. And it's a big deal. But I did it because I found hope that I didn't think existed. And I want to be able to give folks hope and and to not deal with the emotional side of us. We're emotional people. Uh, you know, even you know, in scripture, Jesus wept, the shortest verse in the Bible that everybody knows. You know, we're emotional beings, and for us to, to act like we're not and act like there's weakness inside of doing with that is very tricky. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to actually elaborate a little bit on, actually, I have to participate with my little elaboration here. Uh, you're talking about uh, the, th the choices that seem to have been made for us. Uh, you, your, your father left when you were six months old. In the previous interview, we had, uh, uh, it was probably a good thing that your father, other sons, I believe you said was, turned out the one you said was a drug addict, if I remember correctly. Uh, he had struggled. He had struggled with. Uh, he had struggled with drugs all back the first week of August. Yeah, and uh, he, as we were talking about even off air, we don't know who our creator is, and our we're supposed to view of. I don't understand it all, especially right when you're in the middle of it. You always explain why certain things are happening. But three, four years ago, or five or six years, or whatever, it was, you started to look at life from. Hey, let's take a look at what are the benefits instead of negative. And once you can start doing that, then you start opening yourself and your eyes. What is going on, because if you believe, and I always say this because I, I don't know why guys for who may be in If you're one who believes in a creator, believes in God, whatever, uh, you can understand that there's still an active superior power to us to inner lives. And if you can accept that and you can see that, then you can see what to go through. But look at where I am now because I from and stuff. Oh my God! Look at how horrible. Uh, no, that's exactly right. And <clears throat> I actually got an illustration just this week. You know, when, it, when you start thinking about emotional, uh, emotional work, and even work, uh, even just changing mind from good habits to bad habits, or from bad habits to good habits. You know, if I want to build my arm, I don't take my right arm and put it in the sling and don't use it twelve weeks. <laughs> if I did that, it would wither up. You know, we work it, and I even think some of the things that we go through in life. That is the resistance. You know, we don't know what the physical health or not. And, you know, in, in this interview, but you think about it, in physical health, and as we do weight and stuff, they talk about the resistance because that's what makes us stronger. And yet, just in life, we have a tendency to, well, if I was better, this wouldn't happen. And, or it happened to me. It happened. You don't know. Hi there. We had a little problem with Skype. So now we're back on, and Doug is going to pick up where he left off talking about resistance. Yeah, see, it's really a great conversation, and we wouldn't be having all this trouble with Skype, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what I was saying is, you know, the resistance is, is how we train our body physically to develop strength. And I think some of 
the resistance that we call as trouble. Uh, we all have to go through it, and I think the way we go through it, Kurt, is is really, you know, it's really important. Um, you know, everybody, you know, and you know this, and you know, ninety nine point nine nine percent of the people in the world that's ever done anything that counted for something did it by overcoming, you know, failure. Failure is an event; it's not a person. Uh, you know, so when you go through these these things of resistance, these times of, you know, trials and, and trying because, you know, I've lived long enough to know that, you know, you're either in a storm, coming out of a storm or getting ready to go into a storm. You know, that's sort of life, you know, and but sometimes they can be they can be learned uh, based on, you know, the, the positive resistance of what we go through to help us develop to help us grow and all of that around the the emotional side uh, even even based on what you you had said earlier with you know how we look at things um and you know you got friends just as i do that you know that are doom and gloomers and ultimately time you get through with an hour conversation they've sucked the life completely out of you because you know the sky's falling and you know and i think it's going to rain poo and all of that stuff and oh, and sometimes yeah. it's just you know, sometimes it may be bad, but you know the sun's going to come up in the morning, and we gotta, we gotta put, put, we gotta keep putting one step in front of the other. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like taking the idea. It was one of the things that I just kind of I got tired of living up north because of going through fourteen days of gray skies, and that can be very depressing. Well, living up in Chicago and the Great Lakes area, that was just fairly very normal. But you end up re, uh, you understand that yeah it's gray sky today but that's not necessarily the way it's going to be today or excuse me the next day or next week or the week after but yeah storms come and they go yeah and I think the you know the to be cognizant and that's a big word for a Kentuckian right there you know <laughs> to to, to, <laughs> to be able to recognize our uh, you know, and sometimes our mental state is just, you know, sometimes I get physically tired and I just get, you know, I get down and, and my wife will say, what's wrong? And I'll, I got a pretty pat answer now that we both get it, you know, and uh, everything and nothing. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can't put your finger on it. It's just one of those deals that, you know, and like, you know, okay, I'm just really frustrated and I need to go take a nap and, you know, I wake up, it's going to be okay. And, and then sometimes there is specific things that you can put your finger on and you can, learn how to, you know, learn how to deal with those and learn how to do things differently, you know, and, and, I, and I know that, you know, Einstein said that doing the same thing over and over, inspecting different results is the definition of insanity. I like to say we do the same thing we always done, we get the same thing we always got, you yeah. know, and, and I personally don't want the same thing I've always got. I want to keep, I want to keep improving. I want to keep growing. I want you know, life at 48 for me is amazing, and I can't wait to see life at 58 because I know that I'm going to grow for 10 more years. And everybody said, well, where are you going to be next year? I don't know, but I promise I won't be in the same place I am right now because I look forward to, to living a complete life, and I, I think that's a, that's a big deal. And I don't think we can live a complete life without dealing with the emotional side of of what we all go through and i think it needs to be said that hey it's it's okay to you know to recognize some things that's even in your past that's sort of made you where you're at but what's not okay is to allow your path to control today and tomorrow you know we never deal with it but yet it still controls us but if we deal with it i think we can get past it and get through it and then all of a sudden we actually can begin to live uh in the moment live with some joy and, and real peace uh, but instead we you know we live angrily because of our past and and you can tell that when you talk to somebody and they tell you a story and you would swore it happened last night and it happened 20 years ago yeah. because of all the emotion all the anger all the you know stuff that's real but you know i mean it's been 20 years let's let's try to emotionally systematically move past it there's a saying that I'm going to actually bastardize, but uh, it, the, basically the whole saying is you can't work towards tomorrow when your mind is still working on yesterday. Yeah, 
That's really good. It might be an old saying, but I've never heard of it, but I like it. Yeah. I like it. And that's the, and, and I think that's reality. And I think that, you know, uh, you know, and, and I, and I'm not making light of, you know, people's past. I mean, I've, you know, I've counseled enough to know that there's been some really, really tragic things that happened to people. I get it. So I'm not making light of it at all. I get it. Um, and that you can't, the problem is we can't do nothing about it other than get sometimes professional help. I mean, at a high level professional help because, you know, I mean, there's some of the stuff that, you know, that people come to me and it's like, okay, that, that's way too deep in the end of the pool that I go in. You know, here's what you need to do. And, you know, and I've, I've learned that I don't have to have all the answers, but there is some tremendous professionals for, for deep emotional help that can, and and me, I found it to be the greatest investment that I've ever made in my life. Uh, and, and, and honestly, my, you know, my book, you know, my life through my eyes, I realized that my troubles, although they were big to me, puppy loves real to a puppy. Uh, I, I realize in comparison, they don't, hold a can to some of the stuff that folks have been through. Uh, and I get it. So, but I also think that we owe it to ourselves, and we should be deserving enough to be able to, to go and get some real help in order to be able to, you know, get through it so we can live our days. You know, life expectancy is getting longer and longer and longer. Uh, quality of life, you could probably argue is, is a little better in most places so why not deal with the emotional health so the emotional health can keep up with the other things in life that we that we all are told that we should work on. Indeed. With that, we're going to take our second break for the show and invite everyone to stay with us. We'll be right back with my guest, Doug Harold of Time and Eternity. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Hello, this is Andy Peacher from Freedom Talk Radio. You're listening to Kirk Spencer on K-Wave 6 Radio. Hi, this is Amy Young of JSJ4. We are providers of junior iPhone, iPad, iPod, also Samsung, Sony, Nokia parts and accessories at very good quality and low prices. We sell to individuals, and the companies have 3 to 5 days delivery time by DHL or UPS. We do delivery in 24 hours after payment confirmed. For more information, see our website www.jsjphone.com www.jsjphone.com Contact me, Amy Young, mailbox, emy at jsjphone.com or by phone 0086-1341869-6395 by Skype, emy.yang2012 Are you ready to put an end to thinking about how you wish it were and take action? Take this step to find out more by going to coachingbyria.com and you can receive your free consultation session with Coach Rhea. Coach Rhea is a certified professional life coach with a passion to help make the difference in the world. Hi, this is Megan Serleski, author of Who Am I? How My Daughter Taught Me to Let Go and Live Again. And I am on K-Wave 6 Radio. And welcome back. Uh, again, my guest is Doug Harold of Time and Eternity. And just before the break, we were, well, actually, Doug was talking more about uh, emotional health. 
and how to actually get past it and move on so your life now and in the future can be a better life. So I'm going to give the mic back to Doug and let him roll. So go for it, Mike. I'm saying Mike. I'm Doug. Mike's, Mike's the other thing that we're yeah. talking about, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. News going to screw up so much. But, uh, but, you know, as, you know and, and, and obviously, you know, when I talk about it, and I'm going to get past emotional health right now. When I talk about emotional health and we take 15 or 20 minutes to talk, I, mean, I understand that we don't scratch the surface. Uh, you're talking to a guy for seven and a half years that's went every other Monday night to a professional. Uh, so, you know, but I but I do want to encourage your listeners to either, you know, if, if there's something that resonates with what we say, they can certainly look at timeofeternity.net. We got some stuff at a very light level that, that might be an encouragement to you. Uh, but, you know, don't be ashamed. And, and I guess that's the right word. Don't be ashamed to raise your hand and say, hey. Maybe I could use some a deeper level of, of help. And, and, and I say ashamed, you know, I, I dealt with, you know, the five and a half or six years of, of going to see Dr. Cressy, who is a, you know, a, a tremendous psychiatrist. Um, you know, he's a child psychiatrist, mainly works at the Cincinnati Shriners Burns Institute, uh, deals with young people with burns. And, you know, a lot of my trouble was my youth. So I was fortunate enough to find him. But, you know, when, when, you know, I, for six years, Kurt, you know, the embarrassment of going in there, because I, I, I knew what Kentucky and, and I certainly knew what Baptist thought about emotional health. Uh, but, you know, last May, when, when I just decided to write my book, uh, it's because I truly got help. Uh, and then I, I went from hope maketh not a shame and I, I had so much hope and I had so much joy and it had done so much for my life that I was able to, to come out and, and honestly just tell it all inside of in inside of my book and even on your radio station uh, and there's still sometimes that awkward shame that society tries to put on it but it's changed my life and you know and I'd be ventured to, to say that you know and in, in the world of life goes I got I got a pretty good one and, and now I'm actually able to enjoy it so get in just, you know, 20 or 25 minutes. And uh, so I, I want to jump now after saying that, mm-hmm. feeling like I'm a very inadequate job on the health. But I want to jump to the last two real quick in the, um, in, you know, in, in, in the five pillars of what we call personal development. Uh, and the last two being, you know, financial health and then uh, also physical health. Um, and, you know, I think physical health is important. Uh, for a long time, I sort of hid behind my weight and me being, you know, not huge but bigger uh, mm-hmm. just because I was, you know, I was ashamed or afraid of my gifts. And as long as I was overweight, I could just sort of hide behind and yuck it off and laugh it off. And nobody would ever expect me to reach my potential, you know. But now that I'm 48 and I have a passion to change the world, I realize that uh, I can only change the world if I'm here. And to be able to take care of physically myself to allow us to to do those things that provide for our family to be able to go and enjoy things and you know that's certainly a that's certainly a big deal. I know body the exercise profit a little, but it does profit a little. So we should take care of you know how we eat and you know and, and you know and you and I both know. I mean we could get into the to the GMOs. I've been in the food business all of my career. Uh, you know, I know what to eat, what not to eat. Mm-hmm. I know my wife battled cancer. The direction we went was holistic and, 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 and with natural medicine and food. Uh, so I get it at a deep understanding, but just to be able to, to owe it to your body enough to, to try to take care of it is, is, is a pillar. And even in time and eternity, I'm not the expert. Uh, I have a very dear personal friend of mine that's a personal uh, trainer has a little personal studio here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and you know he writes an article every month, just some little tips that the everyday person can can use to implement inside of their life just to make small changes. You know, we didn't get to where we're at physically overnight. We're not going to change it overnight. And if people do have a good physical routine, they they you know they should they should they should keep they should keep going because you know we only have. Uh, you know, one body, and we only have one 
opportunity to go around this thing and, and to take care of ourselves physically, you know, I do believe is important. And I'm glad that I'm finally at the mental state personally to, to understand two things. One, I owe it to me. And then two, I owe it to the rest of, you know, the, the rest of the world to be able to give back and give them my best. And if I'm quite frankly, if I'm not here, I can't give them my best. So that's why, you know, I'm trying to do better, but mentally I can do better. Again, this is another thing that for a lot of people, the emotional health is even tied to our physical frame. So, um, so that's my physical health spiel. Uh, and this is one thing that you and I haven't talked about off the air. So I would, you know, I'd like to turn into a, a listener instead of a guest for just a minute and, and get your, uh, on that. I get my what on that? Your thoughts, <laughs> your thoughts. Oh, this is funny because now we have the guest turning the table on the host. Really cute. Okay. <laughs> just for a minute. Just for a minute. It's Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I'm laughing about it. Uh, yeah, actually, because I am a holistic therapist, and I've been doing this the majority of my life, uh, the thing that most people understand in some form or fashion, you can't be happy when you have a migraine headache. It's the it's like all you can do just to sit up straight, especially if you've got a really serious migraine headache. So if you're not eating correctly, you're going to have a headache. Another interruption from Skype. So anyway, as I was saying, yes, um, if you have a migraine headache, and I've known many people that have had migraine headaches that are just, as they call it, it's out to beat the band, meaning that they can't function. It's the best they can do is just lay down with an aspirin or something and try to get some sleep, and hopefully it will go away. Uh, if you are overeating, you get tired or you get lethargic, if you're not exercising, your body's not in motion, uh, you find it very tiring just to even walk around the block. I mean, that's maybe an extreme, but uh, you have to keep in motion. You have to exercise. You have to do something. I don't mean you have to go out here and run 10 miles a day. I mean, if you're a marathon runner or training to be a marathon. Uh, you don't have to be a triathlete, uh, but you know you can go swimming, you can go just walking in your neighborhood, or uh, instead of taking your car someplace, especially if it's just to the corner store, walk, don't drive. Uh, if it's just a couple of blocks away, go, walk, do something, keep active, eat the correct foods, learn what not to eat. Matter of fact, if you want, matter of fact, the easiest way to do this, if you're one that can actually slow your life down enough to listen to your body. It will tell you, I don't need this, I don't want that. Even though you want it emotionally, you need to stop consuming whatever that is. And usually it's an excess. Okay, having a beer every now and then, no big deal, so unless it makes you drunk. But having a beer every now and then, and I don't mean every other hour, but <laughs> you know, like once every weekend or every other weekend, or yeah, I'm not one who drinks much. I take a beer about once every three to six months, and that's about as far as I go. And the same thing goes with mixed drinks. And I just I'm not into the alcoholic beverage thing. But when I do drink it, I drink it in moderation. I don't get drunk and I don't get stupid. I don't do things that I'll be embarrassed for later on. Basically, it's learning what is good for your body and what's not good for your body. What's good for Doug's body may not be great for my body because we have different body chemistry. So you have to learn to listen to what your body is telling you. Either that or doctor will be telling you what's good for your body. Take your choice. You know, I told you that we had never uh, talked about this subject before. So, you know, then we get to the physical health and you know the holistic thing and you're the guy and all buttoned up see so it was it's really a, a, a cool deal but yeah i think uh, you know i think so the physical health is a is a big deal and then lastly uh, and you know we could drive this one you know under the ground too is is, is financial health um you know and you know and that's a big subject but you know you and i were talking about a little bit off the air about uh, you know about 
the overall economy, rather the U.S. economy, the global economy. But obviously, we're talking about from being very poor, um, uh, are very broke, not poor. We were rich in lots of ways, but we were broke financially. Yeah. Uh, you know, I never, never really learned about saving. I never got into the habit of saving until you know later in life. I'm just now getting into a a good habit of saving. But you know, how are we doing with our financial plan? Uh, and it's not about. And folks that know me understand this. It's not about saving every dime and, 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 and squeezing George Washington until his hair turns, you know, curly and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. But it is about being fiscally responsible for our own family, for our own our own deal and then trying not to overspend. I mean our you know, and we could go another show on 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 the the governmental or societal trouble, but even just personal stewardship is a really big deal, and it is our responsibility. Uh, it, it it amazes me, uh, you know, that it took me so long to learn it, but it amazes me that some people do not believe that it's their responsibility. And, you know, for, you know, I'll give you, a, you know, a personal illustration. You know, I was teaching in, uh, one, one, one evening in, in church, and, and I'm a guy that God has never given a verse. You know, you hear all these people, God gave me a verse. Well, God has never given me one. And I've, you know, been around church and pastored a church for a long, long time. And, you know, one night about, you know, five or six years ago, I was teaching and and I got a verse. I mean, it was mine. It was illuminated. I mean, it hit me right between the eyes. And it says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him work that he may have to give to them that are in need. And, and, that, and at that time, I was struggling with working a, a public job. A secular being. Six years later, I understand the wisdom in in what God had told me, but you know because you know I tell people I want to, I want a million dollars I want a million dollars because I can do more with a million than I can fifty thousand, uh, and I I could give lots of references about you know how we give and what I but but it's about personal finances and personal stewardship and you know and you know you've lived as long as i've lived and i'm sure that you know you have your own horror stories and even some good stories but but when we talk about the wholeness of life we can't we can't leave out the subject of of our of our being as far as our monetary dollar goes dollars in america being able to take care of our family being able to you know provide and you know and and i think that most people uh certainly in in america we we're long past uh provided in and even you know way way past even the necessities and even the wants but but some of those things have put us under a great deal of bondage where we can't we can't enjoy the other things. We can't enjoy the spiritual side of our life because our prayer is, how do I get out of this financial deal? We can't enjoy the relationship side because we're always fighting and bickering about money, and then money always destroys the emotional side. And you know, you don't, you get depressed. You don't. So, so the whole thing, as we talk about the five pillars of the personal development, it also. <laughs> excuse me Mm -hmm. it all sort of rolls together and you know you can pick and choose which one goes first or not but i think that they're all important and uh you know and and again you know we've talked about currency we've talked about the global and the your personal views on on stewardship and personal finances but for me kurt nobody nobody taught me i had to learn through hard knocks i grew up poor and for lots of years we didn't have no money and then when we got a little bit of money we didn't know what to do with it university of hard knocks is a tough school but when you come out of it as a graduate you know not just knowledge but you have wisdom behind it so actually for those who are anything like i was i used to love sitting at the feet of older people when i was a kid it wasn't so much heard of it was kind of dying out as an art, if you want to call it an art form, when I was a kid. But love to sit down and listen to older people telling us about their life and their experiences. But 
when you are learning from the University of Hard Knocks, as most of us call it, or as I call it, the University of Hard Knocks Wisdom, uh, you have learned something that is definitely yours. It can take that away from you because it didn't come from a book. It's something you lived through. So it is actually great value. I think great value for anyone willing to listen and to learn. I want to turn listening again. Am I wrong? For uh, nah, I shouldn't say wrong, but do you understand? You know what I mean because they didn't. They don't teach you financial. Work. Unless you go toward an accounting degree, and that's even a different, even at a different level, you know. And I do think it's important that folks uh, understand where they're at, and they try to they try to be good stewards. Of that. Yeah. With this, we're going to take our last break, and we'll be right back with Doug Harold of Time Inter. Let him wrap it up in just a moment, so soon. Yes, honey, this is Marlo Wright of mbymarlo.com, and you're listening to K-Wave 6 Radio. Do you get writer's block or tongue-tied when you try to write or talk? Need a wordsmith for a script, article, or research paper? Let K-Wave 6 Productions help you with all of your audio, visual, editing, and language translation needs for your business or hobby. Does the thought of creating a website give you chills? We also have webmasters to help you with all your website needs. Remember, K-Wave 6 Productions. www.kwave6productions.tk Or email us at info.kwave6productions.tk Hello, welcome to K-Wave 6 Radio with Kirk Spencer. My name is Troy Matheson. I am a polymath and adventurer in arts and sciences currently working with good people at newearthnation.org. I highly encourage you to check out that website. We're doing incredible things there. Thank you. Hello and welcome back. Uh, again, my guest is Doug Harold of timeandeternity.net. And uh, just before we took our last break, uh, we were talking about uh, financial health and uh, we're winding up the show, and uh, we're going to let Doug go ahead and give his final words in the next 10 minutes or so, so we can wrap up our show, and hopefully we can have another show with Doug in the future, where Skype is not bothering us, and my dog isn't outside barking. So anyway, Doug, you have the mic. I said it right that time. <laughs> well, that's what makes it real, you uh, but I'd like to say, really, it's uh, outside of the Skype problems. I really enjoy talking. I really enjoy the the show and the kindred spirit, and, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to get to be on. And hopefully, what we said is, you know, has helped some folks. And certainly, Time and Eternity dot net. There is some stuff out there. I'm not uh, I'm not here to get rich. Um, you know, my book is I don't know ten bucks, twelve bucks. You know, if some of your listeners can't afford it. You know, email Bobby. She'll send you one. I don't. It's about getting help. You know, and and I I appreciate you having me on, and hopefully it makes a difference in in other people's lives. And and certainly, you know, I've said for years and years and years. Everybody said, "Where'd you go to school?" I'd say HK University. You know, uh, because um, you know that's where I've had to learn it. And I'd like, to, you know, even you know, I smiled when you said about you know, sitting at the feet of old people because that's been my life and I, and I love it. Uh, and I've learned pretty quick that, you know, you got two ears and one mouth and to keep your mouth shut and your ears open. You'll learn a whole lot more, a whole lot quickly, you know? So, uh, but it's been, uh, but a, you know, good to, to be here and maybe one day I'll get to come down being well person and that would be cool. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about skating. You know that's it. And there's a lot of great things going on with turning you know, I don't know if it, it'll do any good to plug it, but we are having a, our first conference, a lean leadership, leadership with a purpose, uh, Cincinnati, October 21st and 22nd. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to the Big Sticks uh, in Dallas, April 14th and 15th to do the something. And really, it's, this is the, the organizational development side of our business, trying to teach folks how to be uh, an I leadership, a servant leadership model. Uh, I believe that, you know, treat people and they might act like people and and I'm a big believer in that. So, you know, all of that stuff's on our on our website. Right? And, and I do really, really appreciate you. I enjoy it. I enjoy all the other podcasts that you do. That I've done. The most recent one 
as you have piqued my interest off the air and and hopefully you know what we do uh, at least encourages somebody and if there's anything that myself time and eternity can do just all they got to do is get online and email us and we'll do our best to, to serve them the best we can well i thank you for the plug for this but uh, the reason why i love having you on this show and you have a sting invitation to return here for anything that you have that you want to talk about because we both have is that uh, camaraderie I go, actually our goals are pretty much the same uh, while other people charge for their podcasting mine will always remain free I only want to earn my money from uh, getting advertisers people who want to support the show uh, because as you say it is about helping other people it is helping people to make lives better maybe from listening to you, to me, to other people that are on the show, people can go and go, you know, I can relate to that person. I can relate to that person's experience. Uh, and or, uh, wow, that person really has something that really, as you say, relates to me in my life. And uh, if you want to call it in, in a Christian way, uh, you got your verse. You got your particular podcast that just reached out and just went, hey, here's the way to make your life better. However you want to look at it as a listener, that's the reason why here, that's the, that's the reason why Doug is, will be a constant uh, guest on the show if that's what he wants to be. And uh, if you read his book, like, you can buy it or if you can't afford it, you know, but you, be honest about it. Well, you know, don't go say contact his assistant and go get it free. Be honest about it. And, you know, Somebody else and, might need it. And you'll, you, know, you read what you sell. So, but but I and, and I truly mean yeah. that. I mean, it's not for me. It's not about selling book. Uh, it's about helping folks change their lives. And you know, we've been fortunate enough to to sell folks. But it's not about selling book. About people. And and if I uh, one of the sort of you know, I'm a hillbilly from Kentucky. You know, me being an author is not not my financial career. Promise. I do think there's some stuff in there that I help folks. And yeah, it's ten or on our website or on Amazon. And you know, and if somebody wants help, we've, they're ready to begin investing. Be honored. To, Took the first investment in book if they truly can't afford it. Well, I'm going to look at your uh, link on Amazon, and I'm going to put it up on my website. So anybody who's to find, you can find it under the advertisers page uh, at wave uh, 6 radiotk and the six is always a number. So anyhow, Doug, uh, you still have several more minutes to go. Do you have any words of wisdom, experience, however you want to put it, to share with our website? <laughs> Something you know, I say we get to talking, and you know, but those, but those five pillars are out there. Uh, there's a couple of whys out there that that'll help. Some. Well, there, you know, there's, it really is about uh, you know, invest in yourself so you can ultimately help others. And you know, and I, I'm sure that when I was on before, I told you about the, the illustration of the apple tree. Um, the apple tree is that life. we invest apple tree. Other folk begin to get to enjoy the fruit fragrance hour. Uh, so that's why we invest. That's why we try to keep growing because you only know, give what you got. If you don't have it, you can't give it. So that's why I'm here. I, you know, read four or five or six books a week. Uh, I don't care where the time job is, depending on how you look at it, you know. But but I'm passionate about growing because I'm really passionate helping people. I can only help serve those people when I have something to give them. And, and I think that's where we need to look at our own lives. Sounds wonderful. So with that, I guess we'll end our show for today. Stay tuned. Uh, just going to have to add some of uh, my usual notes for the end of the show, which you can listen to our show on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast.com, feed to all of our media players, our computer and smartphone friendly, so you can always listen to us on the go or stationary right in front of your computer. And as I understood, you can listen to us even on your car radio if you have one of those uh, well I guess they call it satellite radios uh, our shows are always free as you may say a little bit earlier and you can subscribe to your favorite media player once you find one that you like so I encourage you to subscribe to our blog let you know what's going on new we just changed them from blog to what's new and um, you if you see if you have any suggestions and or comments for the show you can send it to info at kwave6, the number 6, radio.tk. That's info at kwave6radio.tk. And uh, we also ask that you support our advertisers. And if you didn't hear them on the show or you missed it or whatever, you can always find them on our advertisers page on the website. 
and you just click on there so it'll take you directly to their websites. So with that, Doug, thank you again for being here. We look forward to your next visit, at least I do, and we hope that uh, everything goes well for you. And All right, again, my pleasure. Thanks for having show. me. And thank you, everyone, for being here, and we'll see you again soon. Be well. Thank you for being part of our audience. For more information about K-Wave 6 Radio and the services we offer, go to www.kwave6radio.tk. Have a wonderful day.